Make a joyful noise, New Harvest. Make a joyful noise, New Harvest. Now the scripture says, now this, the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit is, there is freedom. Right? So let's praise God this morning for some freedom. Amen? All right. Do it like you mean it. Praise God for some freedom.
and praise. Amen. Glory, 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 glory to God. Whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. And we just come to worship His name, to bless His name, to shout hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah all over again. We are so excited. We want to, we want to say thank you once again. Uh, wonderful praise team and urges in the very presence of God. We thank God for you, and we thank God for you who are watching us live right now. Amen. I want to say, give a shout out again to Brother Catherine and, and, and Sister. Uh, uh, I get it backwards. Brother Corey and Sister Catherine, with what they're doing with Lift Academy, and, and while we're lifting our offering, we want there some pictures that they're going to show of the great work that they are doing and impacting their community, impacting our young people, uh, impacting the middle school age. So we want you to understand that get some time, come down and volunteer on Saturday morning. It starts at 9 a.m. and just give them some support. Amen? So as we stand, begin to bless the Lord with our offering. Amen. That which He has entrusted unto us. The reason God increased you, one of them, is because you can be trusted can absolutely be trusted and he wants to increase and he wants to bless you so as you stand we're going to pray amen hallelujah father in the name of jesus we give you a long glory and praise oh god for you being the god of increase you own everything you are jehovah jireh you bless that dear god right now lord we give you the tent you bless the 90. we thank you oh god that the, that the vow has been rebuked Winners of heaven, they got open unto us, and we have we don't have room enough to receive everything you have for us. Now, Lord, we thank you for what you're forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Just follow the urchers, amen. Thank you. 
the Holy Spirit right now to saturate your atmosphere, to saturate what you're dealing with, to saturate all the issues that are around you. You're asking the Holy Spirit, glory to God, to set on you, to saturate you, to deliver you, to bless you, to comfort you, to bring consolement, contentment, and peace to your heart. Hallelujah. So as they sing that chorus again, just worship the Lord with it. Just worship the Lord with it. As you as the Holy Spirit. Glory to God.
your presence. saturated of God and those who are watching is going to be blessed beyond measure as we worship you for it right now in the name of Jesus we pray amen hallelujah God is good amen and we are so excited to be here we are so excited to see you we are thoroughly convinced and persuaded that your lives, your life is going to be changed today for all eternity, that God is going to bless you and open up some things for you, and which whereabout we are excited and we are glad about it. Uh, we're beginning a new series of study called The Principle of Increase to Make a Difference. Uh, uh, this probably will go on maybe five to six weeks, but I believe that it's ordained, of the, ordained by the Spirit of God, and you are here to hear it and to begin to apply the principles of God to your life. Our foundational scripture, go ahead and mark this down. We're going we're gonna to go on a journey, but we're going to come back to this. Our foundational scripture is going to be 3 John, it's just one chapter, the first four verses there. But we'll, we'll read that a little bit later on. But we want to go on a journey right now. The principles of increase to make a difference. Why is it that God want to bless you? Why is it that God wants to increase you? It's not wrapped around something that is selfishness, that is all about you. It's really about making a difference. It's really about making a difference. 
when the interest that when the interest is about others, God bless you with more. If it's just all about you, then then you limit yourself in the capacity of the ability that God wants to open up to you. So then God wants us to increase, but there's a principle that we have to go by. So I want to share a few things with you that I think is of extreme importance. I haven't met anyone in all of my years of living that don't want to increase in some fashion in their lives. Nobody. I have not met a soul that in some fashion of their lives, they don't want things to be better. Not only that, I believe increase is a part of our makeup that has been instilled in every person by the power of God. God has not... God has not created anyone that he does not want them to increase. He does not want them to improve. He does not want them to be better. I, I, I just believe that. I believe that. Remember now, God is a God of increase. From the very beginning, God made the statement in the book of Genesis, everything he created had within it the capacity to procreate or increase. He also says that everything would reproduce after its own kind. Remember that phrase, after its own kind. God did not bless anything to produce any other type of way except after its what? Own kind. Everything God created has a principle attached to it. Get this now. Everything God created, there's a principle attached to it. Listen, creation was complete when God created everything. There was nothing to add. Here it is. There was nothing to distract. Notice now, we are discovering or inventing things from that which already been created by God. We are discovering the, 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 the awesomeness of his creation. Amen. Man is not, everything man makes is from something that's already been created. They cannot create nothing, something from nothing. Only God can speak to nothing and get something. So when he created everything, everything he created has the capacity for us to discover ways to increase through principle. Here it is. Here it is. Your furniture was hidden in a tree. Your clothes were hidden in cotton or cocoon or either a lamb's wool coat. Everything was already here waiting to be discovered. <laughs> and your increase, here it is. Your increase, here it is, is built in a principle. It's built in a principle. I want us to get this so that I'm just, I'm just overjoying in my spirit. I want you to get this so. Listen, what does principle mean? Here it is. Principle is a fundamental truth. Here it is. A fundamental truth. A, a, it's a law or a doctrine or a motivating force upon which you base your conduct upon. Let's slow down again. See, a principle is a fundamental truth. Uh, uh, we make oh, a law. A law is something that, 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 that cannot be changed. Let's give an example. There's a law of gravity. It's intact. You can supersede it with the law of lift and thrust because you can fly. But what happens when you cut the engine off? Gravity is still intact. Gravity will pull you. Don't you know gravity works all over the planet? There's not a single place on the earth where gravity does not work. The same is true when God gives a, a, a principle, it is eternal. Okay, we didn't get that. It is eternal, which means it existed in God before he created anything. So if it is eternal, that means nothing that has been created can block it from working. Principles do work. What else does principle mean? Principle is a fundamental truth that are universal in application. What do we mean by that? A principle is waiting on you to work it. It does not work without you doing something. Are we getting this here? A principle will work for anyone who works it. A principle does not discriminate. A principle does not discriminate if you save a loss. A principle will work for anyone who's willing to operate it. So I want you to discover now limitations that you may think you have. You limit yourself. You limit you. God is not limiting anyone. 
when I was a little kid, they say, well, you know, the sky's the limit. I said, really? Well, I really didn't understand it at that particular time. Your business will grow as you grow it. Your wisdom will grow as you apply principle. Are we good so far? So we understand that it is universal in the application. Also, this principle will work for anyone who is willing to work them. Listen, location or any other obstacle cannot block principle. So the key thing is discovering God's principle to increase. Once I know that it, that it will work, once I understand it's ordained by God, once I understand that it's hot in here, amen, principles still work. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so let, let, let's get this down. Here, 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 here's the principle. Here's the principle. When you operate your life on principles, here it is, and not passion. I'm going to make a statement here. Once you operate your life on principle and not passion, listen to this, uh, listen to this. It keeps us on course with our purpose that God has set for us. It also protects us, principle and not passion, protect us from the pitfalls and the problems that cause us to make spontaneous decisions. Choose principle over passion. Don't be motivated to make a quick decision without understanding the principle behind the decision that you're making. Let me give an example of that. You, you, you remember when people come around door-to-door -door salesmen, you know, selling vacuum cleaners or whatever it is, and they make this statement here. Tonight, just tonight now, not tomorrow, tonight I can knock off this price right here. Well, they already know what they could sell it for. They're trying to get you to make a spontaneous decision at that moment. Because the more you think about it, the more you begin to think, wait a minute now, I, I, I could beat that price. Well, I don't really need that right now. Am I going to pay that much for that? But they want you to make a what? Spontaneous decision. Base your decision this moment forth based on principle and not passion. Now, let's talk about a few things here. Uh, because we deal with the law of Genesis, says that everything produced after its own kind. Here it is. The priority of principle. The priority of principle. Where does principle fit in my life? In St. John chapter 6, verse 33, says this right here. The priority of principle, which means what's first? Because if God is not first, then you rob yourself of not allowing him to be first. God must be what? First, first, first. In your life, in your life, God is first. Above your children, God is first. Above your spouse, God is first. Amen, amen, amen. As far as pastoring, God is first. That must be a priority that God is first. The principle of God must be first. So in, 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 in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33 says this. After now, notice that this is the Sermon on the Mount. What Jesus is preaching. After we really come down to verse 24 where it says that no man can serve two masters. That's when that thought, uh, that train of thought begins. No one can serve two masters. It talks about the need that we have in life. All of them are it there. Don't take no thought of your life. What you should eat or what you should wear and those things right there. But then it comes to verse 33 and says this right here. But seek ye or go after first. Seek, go after first. Aim at first. Seek ye, go after, aim at first. Now, notice that it says the kingdom of God. Well, what, that may be kind of foreign to you. Okay, well, God, what is the kingdom? The kingdom is a domain where the will of God is observed and obeyed. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is now. So then, if the kingdom of God is in you, that means the will of God is in you, and there's a way that that kingdom in you operates. So I could put it this way. Seek first the principles of the kingdom and how it works. <laughs> because once I know how it works, life becomes easier. 
The struggle is when I don't know the principle of the kingdom. So when I don't know that principle, I put up with what I shouldn't. I invite what I should be driving away. Amen, amen. I wind up doing what I shouldn't be doing. So the, a principle does not change. So the priority is seek ye first the kingdom, say kingdom, of God, his principles, how things work. And it says everything you would ever need will be what? Add it. Say add it. Say add it. So that if something is lacking, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that the fact that God has added it. If something is lacking, I may not know the principle to get it to work. If I had a car out there, and I car out there, and it was a brand new GMC uh, uh, Denali four door silver truck. Amen. That's the that's the top one. You know what I mean? The Denali. You know, four-wheel drive, you know what I mean? Running skirts on it, you know what I mean? Full of gas, keys in it. What good is it if I don't know the principle of driving? Does it mean it's not available? It means I don't know the principle to benefit from it. In our lives, I want us to discover because God wants you to increase so much. Glory to God. He wants you to rise so much that he says that I've left principles in the earth just for you. The body of Christ, the Holy Spirit on the inside is a reveal of truth that you can, you can operate on principles and be blessed. Yes, there's more in you than what you're manifesting right now. Yes, yes, God has more in store. You, know, you have not reached the epitome of what God wants to bring you to. Every issue we yield to a principle. Every attack from the enemy have to step aside when principles are at work. No matter what it is. Doesn't matter what you've been attacked with, principle will drive it out. It doesn't matter what's, what's ahead of you, principle will work. We have to understand that, that we must have a priority of principle, which simply means who is number one. Not your feelings, not your emotions, not what you think, not how you see it. Because, see, your perspective and God's perspective are two different things. Because he said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways, thus saith the Lord. So we understand that God want to raise us up to see things from his perspective, amen, and from his perspective, that in every situation, he's provided a way out. In every situation, he wants to give wisdom. In every situation, he wants to give you a principle. Why? Principles do not change. The principles, they are a law. They don't change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So there is the what, priority of principle. Don't you know when you, when you put God first, who do you think God's going to put first? It's a law. You put him first, you just became first because you put him first. That's a law. You put God first, God put you first. He's not, you're not going to put him first, he put you at the end of the line. No, when, you, when he comes first, you become first. Then they say, if you make one step, God will make two. Put him first then. When you put the principles of God first, they will begin to operate in your life. Glory to God. So there is the what? Priority of principle. Then number two, number two, there's the length of principle. Glory to God. The length of principle. And, and look at the book of Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Amen. Turn that with me. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. This is, this, this is going to bless you here tremendously. While the earth remaineth. While the earth. Is the earth still here? Is the earth still intact? What planet we live on? So that means that then while the earth remaineth. Here's the principle. While the earth remaineth. Watch this. Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. 
the length of principle is eternity. <laughs> you can't outlive principle. You can't do it. He lays it out here. While the earth remains, these principles should never cease. Notice here. Notice it. If you plant something, you're going to get a harvest. If it's cold, it's going to get hot. If it's summer, when it's coming. Amen. If it's day, not for long, night coming. And it says it shall not cease. So principle is waiting to be operated. Principle is telling you, I am eternal. <laughs> you stay how long you want to stay, but you can get out as quickly as you want to get out with principle. There are times we deal with things that God is trying to get us out of, but if we can't discern how to get out of, you spend your life there, and then, you're, then you would think everything is based on your experience. No, it's not your experience that is truth. <laughs> your experience is personal. It's not universal. Principle is universal that you can apply personal. While the earth remains. Now, let me ask you a question. Who needs to operate that? The believer. The believer. Have to understand the principle of increase while the earth remains. I was, hearing, I was hearing someone this morning that says this, you know, my grandfather was a sharecropper. And I've talked about this several times. You've been here in the winter time. You heard me say this before. He was a sharecropper. When my grandfather needed more corn, <laughs> what did he do? He planted more corn. How are you going to get more corn if you don't increase the planting of corn? He had to increase the seed time to increase the harvest. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say, I need more corn, and then cut down on the sowing of corn. No. He needed more corn because he had more hogs and feed to feed and mules to feed. So he said, well, you know what? What I planted last year wasn't enough. So you know what? I need to lease another five acres. Because I need at least five more acres of corn to cover everything. Don't you think he went and got five more acres? Seed time and harvest. Princes of God are eternal. Waiting on the believer to put them to work. Don't limit God with your own thinking. Don't limit God with how you personally feel or even whatever it is that you're going through. No, you open up to God and you operate by principle. Here to see, Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means he does not change. John 1 and 1 is in the beginning, eternal. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning with God, eternal. <laughs> Hebrews 4, 12, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder what is the soul and of the spirit, and, a, and of the joint and the marrow, and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, eternal. Now, Here's the next one. The truth of principle. The truth of principle. Galatians chapter 6. God has not created anyone to, to live a life less than what has been made available. No one. And years ago, you know, there was this mindset that and, 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 and that we got caught up in, if you was in church like it was years ago, you know. And they would say about pastors, you keep, them, you keep them poor, they remain faithful. No, you keep problems on them. God has not designed anyone to live beneath what has been made available to you. That's for every believer. Every believer. Every believer is to excel in all that is good. Every believer is to increase. So what's the truth about principle? 
it is Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to verse 10. Here's the truth about, about, about principle. Listen, Paul writes to the church of Galatians by saying this, do not, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Be not tricked or be conned over or misled, okay, or blinded. You understand this? Be not deceived, for God will not be made mockery over by not fulfilling what he has promised you. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Listen, whatsoever a man soweth, you, you read that? That shall he also reap. Here's it is. Who controls what you sow? Who do? Who control what you reap? You do. You control what you sow, and you control what you reap. Because it's a principle. You control what you sow. Now, I'm not, I, listen, 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 listen very carefully here now. Listen, this is a principle across the board. We're not, we're not talking about, well, well he's just, you know, no, no, no. It's, it's more than finance. It's about your life. How are you going to sow anger and get peace? How are you going to sow attitude and, 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 get, and get contentment and comfort? How are you going to sow harsh words and get pleasant ones? We talking about your entire life here. How are you going to sow laziness and get a promotion? How are you going to show you're going to sow not studying and, and just get 4.0? Uh, this is life here. This is life here. It says here, don't be tricked. Don't be fooled. Don't be, let someone run a con job on you. There's not no get rich quick scheme. Be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatever you sow. <coughs> it didn't sow what somebody else sows for you. <laughs> so who's doing the sowing? Who's going to do the reaping? Who controls it? God just gives the wisdom and the principle. We have to work it. Who limit you? God did not limit you. God wants you to have everything that, that Christ died for you to have. The, the scriptures of all the promises of God are yea and in him are amen. One translation says that all the promises are waiting on your amen. He have him available waiting on you to say, amen, God, I agree with you. It's a principle. It's a principle. Then he give two rams of your sowing. If, if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. That simply means if you sow based on anything that deals with the human nature, jealousy, attitude, envy, all those motives there that are not godly, that's what you're going to reap. But then it says, if you sow from the spirit realm, you're going to reap life everlasting. Now, it don't mean just living everlasting life. It means all the principles are eternal is available to you. But the realm you sow in is up to you. Attitude for attitude don't work. It'll never work. It never will work. Temper, per, temper versus temper creates explosion. So what do you bring to the battle? You bring gas or water? <laughs> what do you bring? You, you, you have two pails now. <clears throat> Are you going to stop by the filling station or stop by the well? Amen. 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 Because, see, one is going to distinguish, other is going to make it bigger in the blaze. So whatever you sow, that, that is also what, what, what you're going to reap. He goes on to say that it's such a blessing here because it's talking about the ram of sowing. And then he says in verse 9, grow not weary in well-doing. Let me give another translation. Don't grow weary or discouraged in your sowing good. 
Don't let anyone <laughs> block you from your sowing good. They may want you to act one way, you still so good. You may feel like you've been taken advantage of, but you're not just so good. Don't render evil for evil, but come to wise a blessing. No, 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 no. Don't grow weary or tired or faint in doing good. Why is that? Here's the excitement part. There's a due season. <laughs> There's a due season. There's a due. See, everything has an expirational date. And attached to it is a blessing. Glory to God. Just keep on doing good. You may not think you're coming out, but you are. You may think it's in a row, but it's not. You may think you're not going to make it, but you're going to make it. You may think things are not changing, but they are behind the scene. God has a due date, and he says, don't grow weary. In due season, you're going to reap if you faint not. The principle of increase, the truth of principle, let us not grow weary. Let us keep on doing good. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially those which are of the household of faith. Where is it that we do good first? Household of faith. Why should we be known out there and don't help what's in here? We have to help in here first. And our togetherness here affects when we go out. It start here. Us caring for each other. Us checking on each other. Us praying for each other. Or giving a phone call and encouragement to each other. Or sending a card to each other. Or just blessing each other. It starts in here. When it starts in here, it will permeate outside. See, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are members of reconciliation. We bring people together. We don't push people to divide. No, 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 no. We pray for people. Don't curse. The principle of increase works. And we are the ones that has to work them. Amen. The truth of principle is, 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 is truth. It's truth. Now, 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 notice here now, <laughs> it did, this blessed me. In Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to give these to you. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 11b, verse 12, verse 21b, verse 24b, and verse 25, all have the phrase, after its own kind. All the verses, when, when God was creating everything, has after its own kind. Why? That we don't be deceived. I don't plant corn and get tomatoes. I don't plant cabbage and get peas. If I sow love, what am I going to get? If you sow forgiveness, what are you going to get? If you sow peace, what is coming to you? We just don't grow weary in the doing. We don't grow, grow, don't grow weary. Here, here's the next one. The excitement of principle. Glory. The excitement of principle. And in and, and Psalms chapter 35, verse 27 and 28. Ooh, glory to God. See, principle have an excitement about it because you understand it's eternal. You understand it's from God. You understand God never changes. You understand that it, that, that it would endure anything that comes before it. So there must be an excitement about it. Watch it. Here's the excitement about principle. This should incite all of us. It says in, in, in Psalms 35, verse 27 and verse 28. And God said, okay, that's, that, that's not, some, there it is, okay. Let them shout for joy. Let them shout for joy. Okay, we ain't got the part. Okay, okay. Then. Let them shout for joy. You're getting it now, aren't you? Let them shout for joy. <laughs> you know, yeah. See, he's not saying, is, he didn't say happiness. Happiness is based on an event. Joy is based on a relationship. You understand? So he said, let them shout for joy and be glad. That favor my righteous call. Let them say continually. Let them say all the time. Let them say often. Let the Lord be magnified. Who, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. 
See, when things are not going well, it's a prime time to shout. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. When they give you bad news, that's a, that's a good time to put your jig and praise on. Oh, God, you heard what they said, but I'm shouting for joy. Why? You favor me, you favor me because I'm your righteous call. And I'm going to say continually, let the Lord be magnified because you have pleasure when I prosper. So there's an excitement about it. So anytime you sow a seed, you ought to, see, when you sow a seed, it's in seed form. But God wants you to see the harvest in seed form that you'll shout now. You didn't get that. See, when you sow a seed, I, I, I planted a little small space in my backyard, okay? In, in the, in the, and I planted some collards. I planted some, some squash. I planted a couple of hills of peas. I planted some cucumbers. And I planted a couple of hills of watermelon, okay? Now, 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 listen to this here. We already done picked uh, collards several times. Now, when I planted them, it wasn't harvest size. So I planted in hope, expecting. So when I, when I, so we, when I picked them, I wasn't surprised. Because I planted in, in hope. I planted in joy, expecting to grow. See, I planted, I planted the squash in seed. Ex not until when I planted the seed, I wasn't looking at the seed. I was looking at it in the skillet. With a little bit of onions chopped up in it. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter, you're stirring it real good. You know what, you know what I mean? See, 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 that's what I'm looking at. I, when I planted the seed, the, the seed left my mind because I saw the harvest. That's excitement. See, when I, when I planted the watermelons, you know, when I bought the package, they didn't show me the seed on the outside. They showed me the end result. Because they did not want me to grow weary while I'm looking at the seed. They didn't want me to come discouraged when I saw the vine. They didn't want me to give up when I saw the bloom. They kept reminding me, harvest is coming. Harvest is coming. See, that makes it, see, that's the excitement. See, when I planted the cucumber, the same thing. They, they, they showed me the cucumber instead of the seed. And now I got blooms all over the place. See, the seed has, the seed has given up to harvest. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. The seed had to give up its life for harvest. Did you get that? Did you get that? Are we, get, are we getting that now? Christ is the seed. They gave up his life to get the church. God had to plant him in death, but raise him in power. When you become born again, that same spirit that raised you up from the dead indwells you. And it will quicken your mortal body and guarantee us that when we work principles, harvest is coming. There's an excitement when you plant. There's an excitement when you sow. There's an excitement when you give. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged looking at what you're doing, but get excited about what you just obligated God to do. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. So there is what? An excitement of principle. Hallelujah. Now, the power of principle. Now we go to 3 John. That was the preliminary to get us at the introduction to get us to 3 John. The power of principle. In 3 John, beginning with verse 1 down to verse 4, it says this. The elder... And to the beloved Gaius, John said, whom I love in truth. There are a couple of key things that he's saying here that is of importance when you operate in principle. Know what it says here. Well, beloved Gaius. Then he says, what's my love is based on? Truth. Not feelings. Not emotions. 
but truth. Truth. Then he makes this astounding statement by saying this. Above all, I wish or desire or pray that you may prosper. That's his prayer. He's writing to the church. That's his prayer. I desire and I pray, I wish above all things that you may prosper. And he says, be in health. He said, I want you to prosper, one, be in health, two. Now, here's the connection and principle. It only would rise to the level of your soul. Which means your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imagination. If that don't increase, you won't. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, your intellect makes up your soul. Your soul help us to connect in this world. Our spirit help us to connect with God that we function in this world well. A man that is not born again can see the operate in this world. He just doesn't have God influence on him. So the soul help us operate in this world. So God give us a Holy Spirit that we get a kingdom perspective to operate in this world. You see, see when, when Adam died, here it is, here it is, it's, it's Adam died. It's a, he, his spirit died. He was reduced to operate by information instead of revelation. When you were born again, God exalted you back to information plus revelation. So when John writes here, he said, I pray that you will prosper. One, health, two. Why is it both important? He, he, he used these words here, I want you to prosper. Okay. See, prosper means you have more than enough to bless those that is around you. And it don't even bother what you have. You see what I mean? To be in health simply means then that because your health can reflect how good God is. <sighs> Do you want to live in a leaky house or one that don't leak? Well, what makes you think God don't want the same? He wants your body well that your body can operate in an in optimum level. Why? It give him glory. He don't get glory because you're ailing. He get glory when the finished work of Christ is manifested. So that's why we don't grow weary in, in talking to ourselves and preaching the scripture and quoting the scripture. We don't grow weary. But he said, I wish, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health as a soul prosper. If my soul don't prosper, I won't experience the increase that God has for me. He cannot prosper you beyond the prospering your, of your thinking, of the level of information you call truth, or the information that you make decision based upon, or the information that you trust, or the information that you govern your lives by. We still dealing with principle of increase now. Are we making sense here? This is awesome here. I wish of all things that I may prosper and be in health, even as that what? Soul prosper. He goes on to say this. He, listen, listen, he said, for I, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as I walk in truth. Well, well Pastor, why do you keep using this word truth? Here it is. Truth is the word of God. I thought God would get a better amen than that. Truth is God's thinking revealed to you. Truth is God's perspective that he want to make known to you. Because truth is eternal, like principle is eternal, and God wants you to know the truth. So he's saying here, for you to prosper, something needs to happen to you based on truth. He rejoiced when you he heard that there was living and walking in truth. 
what bring God, what, what give a father greater joy than to see his children walk in truth? What give a mother greater joy than to see her children and her daughter walk in truth? What give God a greater joy than to see the church, his bride, prosper and walk in truth? I want you to be God as a husband man, and he want to bless you tremendously with everything he has, but it's based on principle and the, and, 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 and the information or the renewing of your soul. God has not limited you or us. He's made everything available that is based on principle. Love is from truth. The desire and prosper of your soul is from truth. He rejoiced about them based on truth. And there's no greater joy than God to see his children operate in the truth of principle. So truth is the source and the principle of your increase. Truth is. Truth is. Truth is. Now, I want you to do something for me. If you're not here not saved, we're going to pray for you. And you're going to get saved today. Amen. You are. You are. If you're not saved, you're going to get saved today. Yes, you are. The Lord says you are. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Whatever you're dealing with right now, if you desire prayer, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. If you desire prayer, raise your hand. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Both hands up. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's something here. If you need to be renewed, raise your hand. Oh, same principle. Same principle. Come on. We want to pray for you. You know, sometimes, sometimes we don't want people to know where we are. It ain't, it ain't about folk. It's about you and God. Amen. They don't go home with you. And they're not going to be standing there when God judges you or look at you either. I used to think the altar was a bad thing. I found out it was a good thing. Because everywhere Moses went, he built one. There must have been something about it that he built one everywhere he went. But sometimes we let things, you know what I mean? No, no, it's not, it's not about that. It's, it's, not, it's not about that. It's not about that. The Spirit of the Lord wants to renew, he wants to save, and he wants to bless. And if you want to, if you say, that's me, just stand where you are. Don't come up here, just stand where you are, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Just stand where you are, and we're going to pray. If you need God to do something to save you, to bless you, to renew you, just stand where you are, and we want to pray for you. Listen to me. As we pray, there's an expectation that you're going to receive what God has for you right now. You're going to receive it. Whether it's salvation, you're going to receive it. Renewing, you're going to receive it. Blessings, you're going to receive it. Wisdom, you're going to receive it. Breakthrough, you're going to receive it. Right now, clarity, you're going to receive it right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. At this very moment, the Spirit of God is flowing right now where you are personally. The Holy Spirit is coming to you personally to make known to you personally, personally, that he's working things out for your good right now. You're sensing the power of God over you personally as we pray right now. As you reach out to him, he is close to you as your next breath. Personally, he's doing things in your life right now. Personally, God is blessing. Personally, you're getting peace and strength. Personally, God is blessing right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come to give you a long praise and you ought to be exalted. You ought to be worshipped and you ought to be praised. And as we come into your presence, Father, we just exalt your name above every name. We come, God, as bare as we are, carrying every baggage, every concern, every weight. We bring it before you and lay it at your feet right now. Oh, God, every concern, we cast it upon you, oh, God. 
everything that's been hanging on to us, God. We drag it, but dear God, we thank you for cutting it loose right now. Every disturbance right now, God, you're granting your peace. Every attack on our body, you're granting healing, oh God. Every, every, every issue we're dealing with, Father, there's a solution right now. Every deficit is being replaced with increase. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and discernment, oh God. We thank you, dear God, for your great love on us right now. We thank you for your Holy Spirit is giving wisdom and discernment, blessings, peace beyond measure. Thank you, Father, for it being released unto your people, your people that reach up to you, your people that you saved, that you died for, that you love with everlasting love, that your favor rests upon God, that your blood covers, that your stripes delivered. Your people, we receive it now. We receive it now. We receive it now. We receive increase right now. We receive your principles right now to govern our lives. And Father, and we bless you for it. And we honor you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give God some praise. Amen.